if you've been suffering from symptoms that you have from a concussion for more than 10 to 14 days, or you've been diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome, this video is definitely for you. Women. Welcome to the Chiropractic Deep Dive Podcast. This is the Upper Cervical Research Show. In this video, I will be doing an overview and summary of a research uh, article, a research paper that talks about post-concussion syndrome and the relationship with the neck. So I'll be just going through hitting all the highlights so that you can either read along with it or you can download the research and look at it yourself. The definition of post-concussion syndrome, or PCS, is the persistence of three or more symptoms from a concussion for four weeks or more. Concussions happen when the brain hits the inside of the skull due to blunt force or extreme acceleration deceleration. Injury to the brain consists of ion imbalance, metabolic disruptions, blood flow abnormalities, and autonomic nervous system dysfunction. The medical communities have witnessed that most of these consequences return to baseline around one to two weeks and are thus perplexed at the mechanism of continued health problems. One proposed mechanism is a soft tissue injury to the neck received at the same time as the head trauma, meaning they happen together at the same time. Concussions can occur between 60 and 160 Gs of force. Research shows that forces as low as 4.5 Gs of force can cause a neck injury. Reported symptoms from these two types of injuries are strikingly similar with few exceptions, meaning concussion, an MTBI or mild traumatic brain injury, and a cervical neck injury. A study in 2006 by the University of Gulf found 100% correlation with athletes suffering a whiplash injury to a blunt force type injury to the head, suggesting these injuries happen concurrently. Symptoms associated with injuries of the upper cervical spine are dizziness, headaches, loss of balance, nausea, visual and auditory disturbance, cognitive difficulties, and several others. Limited studies of patients with these issues involving functional imaging show no problems with the brain, suggesting psychological or cervical in origin. This paper reviews literature on PCS and cervical spine dysfunction in order to propose a theoretical hypothesis that the neck injury sustained during head injury is the cause for these PCS symptoms. Figure one in the research shows a great cascade of physiological effects that occur during a concussion from deformation of neurons and ion imbalancing to oxidative stress and potential long-term damage to cells. We won't go into these details as that's not the focus of this review. However, important to know, it's believed that a concussion temporarily disturbs the, me the mechanical function of the nerves, but does not injure the structural part of the actual nerve, which is why most of the time structural imaging techniques such as CT and MRI show no damage to the brain. The paper discusses four mechanisms in detail as to proposed reasons why 10 to 15% of concussed patients have post-concussion symptoms. They are, number one, continued decrease in ATP and metabolic production. Number two, continued axonal dysfunction. Number three, continued autonomic nervous system dysfunction. And number four, altered blood flow. The paper proposes its case for a likelihood of a cervicogenic component. Cervicogenic meaning originating from the neck. Besides the obvious biomechanical mechanism already talked about previously, there are two primary categories of mechanisms proposed. Pain-related and proprioceptive related mechanisms. The pain related mechanism tends toward headaches. The proprioceptive related mechanisms tend toward dizziness. The mechanisms are thought to act in the following ways. Symptoms act as referred due to the overlapping and convergence of nerve pathways in such that injured tissues send signals over nerves and up to the brain. 
and along that pathway. They share or cross other pathways for other places and functions in the body. That overlap can mimic sensations of symptoms by the brain thinking it is coming from one place, but it is in fact coming from another. Thus injuries to deep tissues of the upper cervical spine could create symptoms like headache, dizziness, and many others. Research has shown whiplash patients to have balance disturbances and head positioning difficulties. Patients treated for the neck pain from whiplash have reported relief of vertigo-like symptoms. However, more research is needed. One research cited, Trevelyan et al., showed 12 post-concussion patients distinguished from a control group by painful upper cervical joint dysfunction, tightness in neck, and less endurance in the front neck muscles being associated with headache. Second research cited a group of 18 patients with post-concussion headaches compared with a control group with no headaches or trauma, all had painful cervical joint restrictions. That group was then divided into manual therapy and stretching versus cold pack once a day for 20 minutes. The manual therapy had significantly better improvements compared to no change in headaches for the cold pack group. The paper goes over a case series of five patients diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome, all with varying degrees of improvement from individualized treatment plans, including chiropractic treatment, soft tissue therapy, and exercise. Three of those patients had therapy for the eyes as well. All five patients had significant recovery. In conclusion, concussion physiology and symptomatology is fairly established, yet after the 14-day mark, getting into post-concussion syndrome, the etiology and explanations become unclear. DTI MRIs show lack of evidence for post-concussion symptoms, meaning the DTI MRIs are negative, but there are still concussion symptoms. SPECT does show hypoperfusion in various brain regions in PCS patients. However, it shows the same for physiological and physical conditions also, thus they're not completely indicated as causation. Acceleration, deceleration injuries of the head and neck that are forceful enough to cause a mild traumatic brain injury are forceful enough to cause joint and soft tissue neck injuries. The neck injuries, when found with conditions related to PCS like headache, dizziness, cognitive impairment, and visual disturbance, and treated accordingly, have been shown to improve these symptoms which suggests a cervicogenic origin. The authors strongly suggest that further research is done to examine the relationship between cervical spine and symptoms related to post-concussion syndrome. It should be noted that rest for the acute concussion patient is indicated, but rest is outdated as a management approach for the post-concussive patient. As noted in prior research and the five patients reviewed in this study, Evidence suggests patients pursue skilled manual related assessment and rehabilitation of the cervical spine dysfunction in patients with chronic symptoms following concussion injuries or diagnosed with post concussion syndrome. Once again, uh, anybody who's listening, uh, drop a like. Likes really, really help the videos. And if it's helped you, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe, and all that. It, the more that you interact with the video, the more people just like you, if you're getting help with this, are going to find the videos as well. So we really appreciate that. That's why we're doing this. We're trying to bring value to the community, to the world, and, uh, and to people who, who need this kind of help to change lives. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you soon.